Hello and welcome to episode four of the Deke Heads podcast. My name is Rob Dells, and as always, I'm joined by Sean Jessamine and Damon Bednarski. As always, uh, firstly, hello to you, Sean. How are you? Good, thanks, Rob. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks, mate. In different surrounds there uh, this afternoon. Looks a bit yeah, different. I'm, yeah, I'm at my uh, girlfriend's place, uh, Molly, just in her little bedroom here. So I'm about to kick her out, and she's out in the kitchen there. Yeah, right. I believe. I think. Uh, I think Molly's space. also your. I think Molly's also your hairdresser too, isn't she? Uh, what, pro- probably one and only time, but yeah, most recently <laughs> she was in charge of the haircut. Yeah, yeah you've uh, you've got some good threads there, but we'll touch on that in a sec because we've got to say hello to Damon, of course. And Damo, it looks like you've also changed settings as well this week. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, Rob. A uh, bit of an upgrade, so out of the hotel quarantine and moved across the hallway now. So um, in the lovely Novotel, lucky enough to have two beds in one room. So very spoiled. Oh, look out! And so, do you want to just tell us exactly what's happened in terms of the process this week, as to what's uh, what's happened up there in Sydney? Yeah, so all the Victorians up here in the WBBL, we've uh, done our 14 days of quarantine so we've been given the all clear so today was our first day of uh what are they calling it hub hub life or village life so um we have some freedoms we're allowed to uh go to the gym um at the facility is allowed to go outside for a walk and a jog um but everything else is still inside the um the facility here so there's been a fair bit of uh virtual golf and table tennis this morning um to fill in the time (laughs) Oh, outstanding. Excellent. Nine, nine holes at, at Pebble Beach and uh, about 10 <laughs> sets of table tennis. <laughs> a few over the cart, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so we'll go back to Sean. And Sean's wearing an interesting piece of attire that we uh, need to sort of touch on. Um, yeah, that me... Some people may have seen actually pop up on one of our social media accounts. And Sean, you're wearing a bit of a, a hoodie there. Do you want to tell us exactly what that is? Yeah. So we've got... Um... Got some new gear in from our friends at uh, Max Promotions. They've um, made up. Oh, some there's a plug. Hoodies. <laughs> oh, okay. Unfortunately, no, yeah. uh, no cash for comment here. But um, they've they've made up some some hoodies and t-shirts for us, um, and hope and soon as well some polos and shorts, caps and stuff. Um, so yeah, they've done a good job. They've come up well for yeah, our so um, for our followers and subscribers. Um, is there any merch available for them or? In the future, yes, we are we are taking uh, inquiries and, and orders for any of the hoodies or t-shirts that should should they be interested. So if you are interested, mm. get in touch with us. Absolutely, and there's a few people that have already commented on them because originally we, we didn't think that this was going to be something that we could sort of sell, and then like the interest started coming in, we're like oh holy, yeah, we, <laughs> we, we only to... after the three of us, and we're like oh <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So yes, we'll uh, we'll endeavour to get them on the on the road shortly. But it's fitting that you sort of came up with this as a parallel, Sean, and, and there's a nickname that's <laughs> sort of <laughs> plagued you throughout uh, your professional career since university, and that is merch. Yes. Uh, Damon and I are both well aware of this nickname, <laughs> and the origin surrounding the merch title. Do you want to just go into why and how you got the uh, the title of merch? Um. Yeah, well, I guess it all goes back to third year of uni. One of our prac tutors, uh, he goes by the name of Spencer. He, um, <laughs> I don't know, he thought he he thought he had a bit of comedic value sometimes. I reckon Spencer. And he was, oh, he definitely did. <laughs> and he, I don't know, one day he just came out with this merch nickname because at the time I was doing an internship at Richmond, so I'd have you know a pair of Richmond shorts. It never went. It was never to the extent of. <laughs> Full tracksuit wanker, but it was just like a pair of shorts oh, here or something like very that. Very close. Then, then there might I'd be like, like to like add a... comment there that I think the first time I met you, Sean, in that prac class, I reckon you had three different pieces of <laughs> three different <laughs> internships on at once. So it's not quite the full kit wanker, but it's very close with uh, the representation just of a, all the parties of, that you work for. Mix and match, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a real have a look at me. Don't you know who you're dealing with in the prac class? <laughs> <laughs> because anyway. like that's something mate, that's something that we need to sort of ha- highlight to people that aren't sort of familiar with this is that working in elite sport there's a lot of people that think that some are notorious for just working at places to get a tracksuit <laughs> so that's the uh, i can, that's I can the attest that that certainly isn't my motives behind working in this industry 
<laughs> oh, well, there you go. Also, Sean did once send me a photo of him uh, at Richmond on behind the bench behind Leighton Hewitt as well, just saying, uh, look how good I am. I'm standing behind <laughs> Leighton Hewitt. <laughs> so, I did not. There you go. Uh, as you can... As you can probably tell, though, from the uh, topic of, uh, or from the uh, early conversations, this is a sort of a, of a light-hearted uh, podcast episode this week. And, and with the uh, AFL and NRL Grand Finals on this weekend, we wanted to sort of talk about uh, Grand Final experiences and, and some light-hearted moments that have, have come a, across the journey and, and uh, things that we sort of wanted to uh, introduce in a bit of a light-hearted way. So firstly, we want to congratulate the Melbourne Vixens Doing the uh, doing Victoria Proud with their uh, tight win over the West uh, West Coast Fever on the weekend, so that was really good, really good to sort of tune in and watch. That it was a great game. So Absolutely. congratulations to them. So that, that was a good one. Um, and then also a big thank you to everybody so far that's tuned in and listened to the podcast, uh, whether that might be on Spotify or iTunes, and and have uh, watched the screencast if you will on, on YouTube as well. Really appreciate that, and we've got some some solid feedback off that. So. Thank you. Thanks to everyone that's shown some support thus far. Really appreciate it. And um, if you can, if you can subscribe, like, share, comment, do all those things on the, on the various platforms, that'd be great. That really helps us out a lot. And also there is something else we can introduce today, and that is that we are officially on TikTok. So if, you can, uh, if you're on TikTok and you want to get around, get around the, the Trix page on, on that uh, new sort of social media forum, then please uh, get around us. I've tried to post a, a video on there daily and, and they're pretty, I think they're all right, but you know, we're still waiting for a bit of traction on that forum as well. So if just, you a can side, <laughs> just a side note on what that one, that is a hundred percent Rob Dell's yeah. uh, yeah. endeavor. That one, he <laughs> loves the TikTok, and he's been waiting to plug that and put up videos of himself for a while. So uh, oh. if you want a bit of a laugh and laugh at Rob's defense, definitely have a look at it. Yeah, well, it's funny you say because all, all the boys do feature on TikTok as well. It's not just me, but um, yeah, it's sort of a bit of everything, a bit of podcast stuff, new exercise um, instructions and stuff on there as well. So uh, definitely uh, definitely check it out. I'm sure as, uh, as we put the TikToks up, the boys will feature heavily on there as well. Anyway. But yeah, so I think we might get into the, uh, the podcast now. Hey, Sean? Yeah, I reckon, I reckon we'll start, um, start our grand final chat off with, with you, Rob. So for... Oh, for our, for our listeners out there, we sort of mentioned uh, briefly in our first podcast episode that Rob works for the Melbourne Storm. He doesn't like to tell people this. He tries to keep it very hush-hush. Yeah, um, but, absolutely. <laughs> but Rob does work for the Melbourne Storm. Um, and they, uh, well done to them. They've made it through to another grand final, which seems like they, they play in a grand final just about every other year, the last sort of 15 years or so. But for Rob, who started there in... 2018 correct yep that's it yep um they made the grand final that year also in rob's rob's first year so wanted to sort of get a gauge from you if you can sort of take us through uh what that um the lead up to the grand final was like Mm. um and sort of the atmosphere yeah absolutely during grand final week it was pretty uh pretty surreal to be honest like i think when i first got to the storm um pre-season the 2018 season, I didn't really um, probably appreciate rugby league as much as what I do now, and I probably appreciate uh, the Storm as a club and 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 how fantastic they really are. Um, uh, until I sort of got immersed in that, um, immersed in their culture there, and 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 with that culture, the su- success they've had over the probably like the last decade in particular. And um, yeah, I was just really lucky to to end up at the Storm, and particularly that 2018 season was really. Um, was a highlight as well because you're sort of learning on the fly about rugby league and the storm and, and all that sort of stuff, the NRL. So it was a real interesting experience uh, initially and, and sort of working your way into the season. And then once the finals came around, that was um, uh, just another um, like a, just another positive experience that sort of kept uh, eventuating from there. But basically the the week gone from the, the prelim final to the grand final was just, yeah, it was an incredible week to be honest. Basically the grand final preparation started as soon as that game finished in the prelim and sort of had to figure out all the logistical stuff around that. But yeah, it sort of starts and it was sort of planned um, similar to most training weeks, but it just has the extra media attention and the hype around it. And I, I would think I was probably a bit naive as to how big it was, I think, um, because we had an open training session and 
if you've ever been to Gosh's Paddock throughout um, the winter, a Melbourne winter, it's an open training facility. You've got Melbourne Demons, Melbourne Victory, uh, Melbourne Rebels as well. And so we all share that one sort of facility. And it's a very open, um, open basically reserve essentially. And so anybody can sort of rock up and, and watch training at any given time. And I remember walking out to training on a particular day of like the open training session and it was just ridiculous. There was just so many people there. It was incredible. Um, because yeah, you, you come from Melbourne Storm, like Melbourne Storm in terms of rugby league, it's an AFL heartland. It's not obviously as as um, uh, in the limelight, particularly grand final week, is what the AFL is. Yeah. And so, but just to see the amount of people there was was incredible, and and the fanfare from that. So that was probably the first time that was early in the week uh, before we flew up to Sydney. And I thought, oh, geez, this is uh, this is big. And so we went um, had that training session, then sort of went up to Sydney. Flew up to Sydney probably, I think it was like three days before the game. And yeah, just sort of that's when it probably really took off that it was grand final week um, in particular. Had the uh, had another training session out. It was at one of the Sydney uh, grammar schools actually in, in a city, in a city of Sydney. We went out there and had training again. And that's also when it was sort of like, Jesus is pretty big. And um, yeah, and then basically training and stuff was sort of okay and that, but it's actually a funny story though at that training session at the, the, the grammar school. Like you always play music during the warm up, mm. and so yeah, they always um, you know put the tunes on and all that sort of stuff. And it's only for the warm up though. That's it. So that's probably about five ten minutes worth of worth of music. And so we brought one of the big speakers out to the field. And so this is like in a in a Sydney, all right. And uh, anyway, so we start cranking up the music, and then all of a sudden, because we're at the grammar school, one of the gatekeepers from the grammar school comes out and says, "Oh look." You're gonna to have to kill the music because we've already had two noise complaints from the high rise part of behind us. <laughs> and like you see, like five or ten minutes in, I was like, you've got to be joking. But that's just Sydney. Like that's probably like a Batuta advocate post right there. Like, yeah, the Sydney <laughs> noise complaint. This was like this would have been like two o'clock in the afternoon during the week. And uh, we got done for they someone rang up the school and said, You have to turn the music down. But yeah, so that was yeah, that was really good. And then you lead into the Saturday, which is the day before the game, and you have your uh, your captain's run there, and essentially that's on ANZ Stadium. So that was um, that was that was really cool going out there and having a training session on that. That's probably uh, that was a really good experience. Uh, just going there it was pretty cool to be honest. Um, and then yeah, just but it's just all the other things as well, like helping to set up the the change rooms um, before the, the night before as well, seeing that up and. Yep. And just bonding with all the staff around that experience is probably the highlight. And yeah, it was just yeah. looking back, the, the week went really quick, but it was, um, yeah, it was yeah, something that um, I definitely treasure now and probably took for granted, especially. Um, and then probably leading into the game itself was like the actual game day was actually really long. Like it just felt like the day went for an eternity, I think. Like just the build up, the hype around it was, um, it was really it was incredible because it was in a similar spot to Damo, where Damo's hotel is at the moment is essentially directly across the road from ANZ Stadium. Like it is literally across the road, so you can hear the fans coming in, and particularly with the NRL Grand Final, there's a lot of games on, a lot of feeder and uh, feeder games on, and, and curtain races before um, our game. So there's always a lot of activity, and you can hear that particular year heard the Roosters fans and, and all that sort of stuff. So from that perspective, it was there, yeah, it was interesting and. Yeah, the day just seemed to drag on and eventually you know, the game sort of came around and that was really surreal as well, watching that behind the bench um, and then just watching that game. It was just unbelievable, packed house and a bit of a blur, to be honest, that the game and didn't quite get the, the result we wanted, but nonetheless, it was um, an awesome experience. As we mentioned, the Storm, Storm are back in the, in the grand mm, final. Um, absolutely. But unfortunately, you're not there with them. Um, thanks no. to thanks to COVID and all the <laughs> all the problems that's caused. Um, yeah, what will your role look like this week? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, as you said, it's it's not uh, COVID hasn't you know, been great and stuff, and obviously love to uh, love to be there and 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 in the camp and stuff. But yeah, it's still still get to do my job outside of that and and from Melbourne as well. So. With that in particular, it's a lot of, lot of uh, number and data crunching, essentially. So a lot of processing of um, athlete sort of GPS files and, and all that sort of stuff, trying to look at workloads for training and basically just replicating what I do uh, throughout a normal week as well. But 
uh, just essentially sort of um, looking at training loads and, and monitoring and, and all the usual stuff I sort of do, but just a bit more remote than yeah. uh, than on the sideline, unfortunately. But yeah, it's still it's just a pleasure. Like it really, it's just a pleasure to be involved in the storm and, and to be in that club in any sort of capacities. Yeah, is is a real pleasure and it's something that um, a lot of people would envy. I'd, I'd think, um, particularly with the culture and, and the success. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's probably been a bit of a challenge this year as well, being being away from home, and it just shows sort of the professionalism of the club to still mm. sort of uproot everything interstate and to still keep putting in some really good performances, which is which is good. Um, we might yeah sort of pivot from pivot from there now. And Damo, I actually want to ask you a couple of questions. Might get a bit sort of a bit more personal here, and I, I want to know, Damo, what what sort of playing experience. Um, do you have in in grand finals? Yeah, I've um, been in a few, and majority of them have been losing um, performances. Uh, <laughs> uh, the most most recent one, which unfortunately I think we're about the only cricket competition that managed to get in a grand final before COVID, um, cut everything short, and we're travelling quite nicely. Uh, we were maybe two for sixty, chasing one hundred and eighty in a in the grand final, cruising, got to lunch. After the lunch break, I think the boys had a few too many scones and party pies because uh, the, the wheels really oh, no. fell off. Um, oh, no. And I think it was might have been we lost four for two. Uh, this guy took seven for stuff all. Um, and I was one of those uh, four for two, I believe. And uh, it was, yeah, he bowled left arm across, uh, left arm around the wicket. Uh, and he's just come in and swung it back and just taken the top of off stump first ball. And I've just gone uh, le- leaving that one. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. uh, golden duck in the grand final. Um, oh, leaving one on off stump. Yeah. So that was a um, pretty good grand final for me. I think the only other thing I did was take a catch. But, yeah, not a, not a very good Jeez. grand final. Um, one, one to forget for you, Damo. <laughs> did, like, yeah. did, you, did your batting partner down the other end give you any advice of what he was doing with it or what? Uh, <laughs> so like, well, this is actually my mate Cody um, who was at the other end and he reckons he told me, but um, Cody's <laughs> not, very, not the smartest bloke going around and I'm pretty sure he said he was bowling out swingers, not in swingers. Um, so <laughs> oh, no. it was really good, really good advice from the non-striker and then the look on his face when I've left one and he goes, <laughs> but uh, even the... Uh, the, the wicket keeper goes, geez, you're stiff there. It did just jag at the last minute. So, um, <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Very stiff. Um, but, yeah, no, other than that, I think I've not played in too many others. We won a G-grade grand final, but that's nothing to really gloat about in cricket. And then uh, <laughs> G-grade. <laughs> soccer, G-grade. So- soccer, the only other grand final I think I played in was, yeah, we got done 4-2 in extra time or something like that. So that's not really worth it. And you you were the keeper though, weren't you? I was. I actually had a really good game. Got us to our extra time. But yeah, we won't talk about that in too much detail. (laughs) Oh boy. All right. Well then, uh, Sean, have you got any uh, grand final playing experience there, mate? Oh yeah, we'd be, we'd be going back a fair, a fair way. Um, Under, under 11's footy, uh, we, we lost. And then either under 12's or under 13's, we, Went undefeated and won won the grand final, which was which was good. I jagged a nice little goal from the from the pocket on the run, um, so that was nice. Um, and there was a bit of controversy actually in that game because one of the one of the kids, I, I suppose I suppose every team has them, sort of the kid that you just chuck in the forward pocket and and let him let him do his thing. <laughs> um, he I wouldn't say he had a particularly good game and the. The stat keepers probably didn't have too much of a busy time filling in the stats next to his name. Oh, nah. um, but he somehow ended up with the best on ground medal, which had oh. everyone, which had everyone scratching their head. And um, so that was that was an interesting, interesting part to the day. But other than that, it all, all went smoothly. I asked the question here, Sean. Was he the coach's son or oh, someone from the committee's yeah. no. son? Oh, no. okay. Well, there you go. That's very interesting. Well, his his mum was very um, very passionate, let's say. Um, so I don't know if there was any sort of brown paper bag under the table jobs at, at hand, but um, I don't know. What can you say? We've all moved on. Well, it was it like a potential major sponsor as well? Was there like that sort of financial backing there, sure? No, no it was just it was just odd. Like the, we think they were like, I think the the word going around was it was just a, just a mix up. But 
Um, oh, well, they, they miscounted the votes today. Well, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. They just I don't Australia's, know what happened. Australia's but, next top model sort of stuff. It, but yeah. he was he was very quick to claim the middle, and I don't think you would have been too keen to give it back either. So it was it was interesting. Oh, okay. I love how this is still yeah, coming up 12 years later. <laughs> yeah, we've all, yeah, we've all moved on. Though. Yeah. <laughs> now, is this, was this before or after you were dubbed the other nickname that you have, which is called White Lightning? <laughs> <laughs> is, that's, that is the, like, oh, no, you no, have to was, explain that one. That was, that was beforehand. We, we don't need to get into that. Okay. Are you sure? Maybe, maybe for another podcast. Oh, no. Okay. Now, well, if for anyone who wants a real quick synopsis, that's because Sean apparently thought he was a good hundred meter runner back in the day. Hundred meter, two hundred runner. Results don't lie, mate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh. one other grand final moment that I just want to pop in with. So, oh, hang on. Um, I've even written up a bit of a script here because it won't do it justice if I don't tell it just right. So, oh, um, so my grand final memory here that I've got, it's a bit close to home here. So. Um, if you didn't already know, Sean and Rob are a couple of uh, diehard Doggies fans. And so back in 2016, they actually missed out um, on the ballot, but thought they'd run their luck and go down the ground, the G, um, and see if they could get a ticket. Um, I don't know how hard they tried to get one legally, but I think there might have been some illegal uh, discussions <laughs> there uh, with some scalpers. Um, brown, brown paper bag. Yeah. yeah, definitely. We'll go to brown paper bag. So um, in their endeavours to get a ticket, uh, old Shawnee boy has entered a Triple M radio contest. And uh, lo and behold, he actually won. Um, so now for those of you listening um, via the Apple podcast you or Spotify, I urge you to check this part of the podcast out on YouTube because Thankfully, Triple M Radio actually recorded this moment for all of us to enjoy. So we're turning the clock back here. It's four years, but geez, the the boys are looking very young, very fresh. Might have had one or two beers at the Swan beforehand. So they're looking a bit piped up here. So so for the audio listeners, I'll set the scene. So Shawnee gets called onto stage by um, the great man Spud Frawley. Um, as you expect, Sean's a bit lost for words, and I don't think he's actually recovered from that. Um, he's not very talkative anymore, is he? So, um, but the most important thing to keep your eye out in the video is the bogan from the butt. So we've got old Robert Dalves with one of the most dubious haircuts I think I've ever seen on TV. Uh, he's got the rat's tail out and about. Uh, very oh, interesting. Man. So we've been chatting about some shit haircuts in ISO, but this is definitely up there on um, the old rat's tail. So um, before I do any more injustice to this story, um, Rob and Sean, what have you got to say about the uh, 2016 grand final? <laughs> that well, that oh, day I... was no, okay, sure, like yeah. the most bizarre day I think we've oh, yeah. ever experienced. So it actually started off with the group assignment where we first met you, Damo. We yeah ended up at... we. The assignment was due that weekend and me and Rob, we met at Deacon at some stupid hour in the morning to try and get it. 7.30. Yeah, to get our part done so that we could just enjoy, you know, the rest the rest of the weekend. I remember I was up till, I don't know, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning beforehand. So sleep was was pretty low. I, I reckon it, I'd done the same. I'd finished mine Friday night so yeah. I could have a, a big yeah. day Saturday. <laughs> well, we do, Rob. We, we caught the tram in um, and yeah, as, we, yeah, as so we're we, getting... <laughs> <laughs> go, as, we're go, getting, yeah, as we're getting off the tram we're just we're waiting sort of waiting at, um just outside jollymont station um we're sort of waiting across the road waiting for the lights to change and we spot uh ross Lyon out the corner of our eye who was coaching freo at the time and all of a sudden <laughs> he, all of a sudden big roscoe decided he wasn't waiting for the lights to change and started running across the road darting through traffic so yeah jaywalking yeah, like, <laughs> day off, interesting start uh, maybe we should touch on. We did actually try thoroughly to get tickets, though. Oh, look, oh, look, actually, no, full disclosure. Look, I already had a ticket. So I'll put that on the table because I, so Sean, for people who also don't know him, is a tight ass. And so <laughs> he won't pay for anything. So what happened? I actually bought a Bulldogs membership that year and the year before. So any final ticket, only final, final tickets we got was because of my membership, right? Anyway, so I actually won a ticket in the members' ballot. Um, for the Bulldogs. So I was on I was sky high, but Sean obviously couldn't get one because he wasn't a member. And so the whole week was about me and Sean trying to get him a ticket, basically, essentially. That's what it was. And so we exhausted basically every feasible avenue we could under $2,000. And 
And um, yeah, anyway, so we rocked up to Deakin and uh, we actually entered a competition in Sean's car on uh, SEN radio with uh, Hutchie and Pickers and all the boys there and that one didn't get up. And so we, Sean did have a, a Carlton draft front bar ticket that he could go into at, at the front of the MCG before the game. If, in the event, we, we couldn't get a ticket you know, legally or illegally. And so anyway, we rocked up to the ground and um, yeah, we rocked up to the ground. The Triple M had two last tickets that were going. You had to put a photo on Instagram and me and Sean looking like a couple of Footscray, uh, Footscray locals uh, <laughs> threw a hat in the ring and, and then went from there. But we should probably... Um, Probably roll the footage and then we can maybe discuss a little bit more after it because I think people need to see and hear it before we go any further. Now, we said 1.30 p.m. is when it was going to happen, Spud. Yeah. So get excited if your name is Sean Jessiman. Are what? you here, Sean? Where's Sean? Where is Sean? Oh, look hey. at him. Get Bloody here, hell. Shorty. Come over Come here, Sean. Come over here, Sean. At Sean Jessiman. Take them, Spud. Come over here, Sean. What Have a go at him. Come and put these headphones on, mate. Over here, champ. Nice on. looking Western Bulldogs bogan, Sean. Uh, yeah. Stick that on your head. Put that on your scone there, <laughs> oh, mate. Oh, have a go at him. Yeah, how, how old are you, mate? Uh, 20. Okay, and who you got here with you? Uh, it's my mate, Robbie. Robbie, and you're both obviously Bulldog supporters. Yes. And you've yeah. tried Thanks hard all week. To... <laughs> <laughs> Only got the Bulldogs jumper on, Spud. That'd probably go it away. <laughs> Could the people at home see that? <laughs> Even <laughs> Danny Southern can't believe what you're going with. Danny, <laughs> stick up in the back. <laughs> I will, mate. Spud, Danny, you you're very excited, so... Uh, have you tried hard all week to get some tickets? Yeah, try very hard. Uh, unfortunately, not a member, so I wasn't able to secure any. But uh, What's it mean to get your mitts on these now? Oh, mate, it means a lot. Just uh, been here the last 20 years, just supporting them. And, yeah, it's been uh, great Sean, to see it. Sean, print value of those is 400 each. That's yep. print value. Yep. Regardless of anything else that happens beyond here that we don't condone. Yeah. Yeah. Just buying them from the AFL, they're 400 a pop. That's brilliant. And oh, they're can't. scarce, as, uh, as we said, rocking horse poop at the moment. You just can't get your hands on any. They're the last two. Tickets to be uh, walking in Spud there. Spud won't yeah. hand them over. <laughs> I just like the feel of them. <laughs> good. Hey, well done, Sean. Good Thank boy, you. mate. Thank At you Sean very much. Jessamine. Well done. Yeah. Well All done, right. son. Well done, boys. Going well. Good, good luck. Enjoy the day. Right. And enjoy well hearing from one of your club's absolute legends. Put your hands together for Danny Southern, everybody. Thanks, good you, mate. Don't worry. Footscray and uh, Western Bulldogs fans will know about this man. Uh, back in the day, back in the 90s, as tough, Spud as a footballer was in our competition. Oh, I love it. Oh, wowee. So if you've just had a look at that video, I'm not sure what the other two boys were doing there. Rob with his constant patting of the back and <laughs> childish excitement. I mean, it was very good watching. And, geez, that rat tail. It does me in every time yeah. I watch that video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> makes it, Rob, it makes tails. it uncomfortable yeah. to watch, doesn't it? Yeah, mate, I'm really – I hate – it's just a rat tail. That's the only thing I can't get over is why I would even let myself – Leave the house <laughs> with the rat tail. And you know the funny part was, wasn't it Danny Southern? Was the, yeah. was the other boy yeah, he was on, there? He was on like, stage there, yeah. He, like, he had a better rat tail than anybody. And then here's me looking like a real sort of Footscray sort of setup with this oh, <laughs> really still washed hair, but the rat tail at the back. So, yeah. And then the padding thing, Darren, that was also so I could interject myself in the conversation just so I could make, like, yeah, make myself feel like I was a part of it. But yeah, yeah. it really wasn't. <laughs> you were very awkward in the corner sort of set up there. Mate, I, I can't watch. I can't watch that video. Mm. I can't like. It makes me cringe. Like I just. I, I genuinely. Damo said it before. I was genuinely lost for words. Like I didn't know what to say. Mm. And then, um, yeah, it was. It was a bit weird. The we got off. We got off the stage there and um, got a few. Got a few photos. The one of the Triple M producers, I think, took some photos for us in. Yeah. Yeah. In front of the stage and um, Rob. Rob reckons one of the girls. In charge of the social media stuff, there he was half a chance with. Um, and then we there was there was this, there was this bloke that came up to us. There was this bloke that came up to us and offered us. I can't remember how much it was two grand or something for the. Yeah, I think it was fifteen hundred each. Yeah, for the for the tickets, Ooh. which we politely declined. Um, yeah, yeah, no, in, no amount of money would have gotten us. I think would have yeah, gotten those we, tickets. We tried that hard to get them and weren't going to mm. give them up that quick. Um, I mean, you, you could have sold yours, Rob. You already yeah, had well, one. Yeah, well, I could have done one on the slide. I couldn't. I could have done, you know, make some money and then still go watch the game. But <laughs> no, I had to go sit with my uh, my my friend. And then obviously the game itself was was unreal. It was tight right uh, till about the last five minutes when the Bulldogs just pulled away, which was when uh, boy, boys kicked a goal from inside the centre square. <laughs> that, that's still my 
favorite yeah. favorite football memory of all time. The yeah. tackle the tackle by Morris and then the the yeah. goal by Boyd. I, there was... Here's Buddy Franklin knocked away by Morris. Couldn't mark it. Naismith Kennedy handball out to Buddy. Buddy tackled by Morris. Goal! Dropping the ball. Boyd took the advantage of played on from inside the center square. Boyd's kicked the goal. Boyd's kicked the goal from inside the center. Yeah, it was a good night. It was an unbelievable day. One of the top five days I reckon I've ever had in my life. So, yeah. yeah definitely. There we go. That's a good one. But um, now that we've you know, finished talking about ourselves, why don't we go into actual some, some grand final failures? Damo, this is your wheelhouse. Damo, this is your domain. This is what you've been looking forward to all week. Oh, I mean, I did a lot of preparation in uh, getting ready for this part of the podcast. So, I mean, where do we want to start? The I think if we go back the further, so we're, we're talking about shambolic like entertainment or just ridiculous things that have happened grand final day. I think you cannot go past the AFL Batmobile with Angry Anderson oh. in there <laughs> singing. And that wasn't even at the G. That was out at... Um, uh, Waverley Park. I out in Waverley. Yeah, it was out in Waverley, yeah, yeah. yeah. So not at the G and now at Waverley. And we've got Angry Anderson singing in a blue... Batmobile, which I think they brought back a few years later for something else, but that, yeah, that's did, one of the yeah. all-time ridiculous grand final moments. Uh, well, why don't we? Uh, why don't we take a look at it, and, uh, and then we'll uh, get some thoughts after that one, eh? I think the funny, like the funniest thing to me with that video is like when it when it pans to the other people that are sort of sitting Looking, on those cars yeah. and they're yeah. just like, "What? What is going on here? Like, is this re- like is this really happening?" I think they've got yeah. the sponsors out there. Like, there, there's someone in military uniform. Then there's a few people in suits. Like, they definitely come from Toyota or something over <laughs> to Australia for this, the yeah, game. And they're thinking, "What the hell is going on here?" Yeah, yeah I remember. I remember it was going to be the Super Bowl. Jimmy Steins was was in there, and you you look you can see his him. jumper he's on, like he's like fresh off the off the plane from Ireland, and he's yes. like, what what yeah. have I gotten myself into here? Uh, I think oh, well, if, yeah. if we move into the next one, so we move a little bit further forward here, but I think yeah, meatloaf. You don't have to say anything. Everyone knows how bad that was, but entertainment's yeah. really gone up since then for the AFL Grand Final. They've tried a lot harder um, to impress since that. I remember the aftermath from Meatloaf. He was like having a go back at the AFL, yeah. like having a crack at him, saying, "You know, yeah, it wasn't his ideal sort of you know perform like performance set up and that." But yeah, the acoustics uh, weren't just, right for him. Yeah, yeah. the acoustics <laughs> were right. absolutely insipid performance. <laughs> All right, we'll have a look at this one. Let's go. It certainly doesn't get any better every time you watch it. That's just a shocking, oh, yeah. <laughs> shocking display of and musical like the worst talent part is, there. Yeah, and the worst part is he actually has really good songs. Like I don't mind some of the songs he has, but that was just unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, not, Poor not execution. <laughs> nah. It sort of it sort of rivaled some of the uh, the on field performances that we've we've seen over the June mm. as well. Mm-hmm. I think um, two thousand seven comes to mind. Port Adelaide. Against Geelong, they, yeah. went, they went down by about 120 points in the end. But that game was over at, before halftime. Even GWS last year, that was another one. Where, yeah. There's been, there's actually been a few. We've sort of alternated between like a good, a good game and a and a pretty poor. Yeah. Game. There was a few, a few of Hawthorne's wins against 
they like Frio? Pumped Frio. Yeah, they yeah, pumped Frio. Yeah, Frio. Yeah, Frio. West Coast yeah. as well. They they were over. You could tell by half time and yeah, GWS last year. No good. What about do you remember when um like one of their positive uh, attributes for Port Adelaide was when Choco Williams got his tie and started doing the choking <laughs> symbol to the crowd. <laughs> What was and, the bloke's uh, name he called out in the? Uh, it was Scott, the oh. uh, Scott Transport. Or it, Alan, Alan, Alan Scott. Uh, Alan yeah, Scott. Uh, you, you were right. Adelaide, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, Alan, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think the other one I reckon was good was when Nick Rewalt was like going to stroll into an open goal, and then all of a sudden oh, yeah. Eshaw just came up oh, behind him and just knocked it out. Knocked it out. Opens up for the Saints, oh, Gilbert. Into the path of Montagna. They've got men back. Rebold in the middle. Calling for the football. Schneider. Will he give it to Rebold? He will. Rebold oh. runs it. Touched up the boots. Oh. oh, my goodness. Can you believe that? Wonderful chase. That was one of the best. I was mm. there at the ground. That was one of the best moments you could see. And so Shaw's like started on the 50 yeah. meter up pretty much and ran him down. And Rewald's just yeah. well to bang. And Geez, the crowd erupted. You knew at that point in time that was that was the game there, really. really yeah, it, was a, it was a real turning point because I think up and up until that point it was sort of it was only the first quarter, but it was still a bit a bit even. Um, but after that, the all the momentum just changed straight to Collingwood. Yeah, which would well, have been good for you, Damo. Yes, very good. Um, I mean, if the week before went for a, a couple of minutes longer, I think we definitely would have got done um, there. But yeah. Mm. Certainly, um, it was a good day, and it ended up being one of those sort of not a blowout, but it was a comfortable win yeah. in the end. Um, the replay. All right, so now why don't we uh, why don't we touch on our favourite AFL and NRL grand final memories as well? I think um, Sean and I, um, uh, I think we've already talked about it. Twenty sixteen for us was probably um, yeah, probably our favourite, I'd say, um, by far. Ooh. So maybe, Damo, what about you? I think you've got one related to your old mob, Collingwood, do Yeah, so I was touched on it a couple of times um, just before, but, yeah, 2010 replay, obviously. Mm. Um, like you boys, getting the tickets quite hard. So I actually had been a member since I was about three or four at Collingwood um, and went into the ballot. But obviously when you've got 80,000 fans, it's pretty hard to get yeah. a ticket. Um, so mm. missed out. Uh, my dad actually went to that one. Um, and then fortunately one of his staff members actually worked at ticket tech. So the second time round for the replay, um, you just had to get in and get a ticket first. If you had a membership, you could just buy one. So they thankfully bought me one, but uh, it was a bit weird actually, because we didn't sit together at the replay. So he was down in like AFL reserve and I was up in the top tier with a couple of uh, mums, actually. They looked after me. They bloody adopted oh. me for the day. They gave me everything. They bloody gave me sandwiches, bloody drinks. They just catered yeah, for me. Dad had given me a pineapple and he goes, oh, yeah, go at halftime, go, go get a pie and a can of Coke or something. So I pocketed that one and uh, kept, kept it and said, oh, yeah, I bought my own lunch. <laughs> so, Andy, if you're listening, yeah, thanks for the 50 bucks. <laughs> That's outstanding. Uh, any uh, any from NRL then in terms of grand finals? What do you reckon? I reckon uh, I can't remember what year it was, but the Cowboys Broncos, where the Cowboys I think, scored, oh, yeah. scored at the very last second to tie the game. Yeah, Jonathan Thurston's conversion to win hit the woodwork and bounced out. Yes, and yeah. then they they won it not long into extra yeah. time golden point. Yeah, but that game, like that game, in particular was sensational, wasn't it? Yeah, very good. Absolutely. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can add to it uh, in the 2020 grand final this week for uh, the storm. Yeah, the hopefully goes away of the Finger, purple, eh? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed indeed. Oh, well, how do we? Uh, maybe we should touch on now the uh, the tips. How did we go last week? Uh, that's um, something that I don't really want to talk about too much. But Sean, I know you were keeping the tally. How did everybody <laughs> go with their tips? Well, I conveniently kept the tally because I fared better than both you blokes. So um, I got three three out of the four right. I tipped uh, Port Adelaide incorrectly when Richmond got up. Mm. Um, I think Damo, you got the NRL Grand Final right, but not the not the AFL. And Rob, you just tipped the Storm correctly. So one out of one out mm. of four for you. Yeah, I thought the Rabbitohs were, and to, to be like to their credit, they put up a really good fight. Um, they were in yeah, it the whole game. way, so. Yeah, unfortunately. Mm. But yeah, the AFL that just blew me out of the water. So unbelievable. What about um what about this week then? 
We'll go to start with you, Damo. Who, who are you tipping for the both grand finals this week? Oh, well, uh, definitely Storm. Uh, and I reckon I'll go Pappenhausen for best on. Ooh. Oh, yeah. The Norm Smith yeah. and the Clive uh, Churchill. Yep. Yeah. Uh, AFL. Jeez, I really would prefer neither of them to win. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a tie and come back next week. Uh, yeah. I'm going to say Geelong just because... I don't want to have to deal with the Richmond carry on from all their supporters. So I'll go Geelong mm. and I reckon Norm Smith, Gary Ablett in his last game. He, oh, had, yeah, look he had a really good prelim. I reckon, yeah, it'd be nice to see him finish his career with, with a premiership and a Norm Smith. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good one, actually. Uh, Shawnee. Yeah, I'll go the, the storm as well. Um, might go with uh, the Fox at O'Carr for, Clive Churchill. Look okay. out. And AFL, um, I, I think I'd prefer Geelong to win. I'm not sure they will, though. I'll, I'll tip them. I'll tip Geelong mm. and I'll, I'll back Danger in to have a, to have a big game for, for Norm Smith. Mm. There we go. All right. Well, for what it's worth, I, uh, I reckon I'll go the Storm to win the grand final. There's a, there's a big uh, revelation there. And we'll go Cameron Smith for the Clive Churchill. Um, and then for AFL, I reckon Richmond will win um, uh, there. And I reckon Grind Myers for the Norm Smith. There you go. Grind Myers to kick six in a losing effort to win the Norm Smith. And, nah. and what does that multi come up to? <laughs> <laughs> that, would be, uh, that would be, you'd probably have to work for the rest of your life, uh, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, if there's a betting plunge after this, you know where it's, you know where the tips come from. Uh, but no, I reckon, um, yeah, I reckon Richmond and probably uh, if Richmond ooh, win. Dustin Martin gets yeah. Norm Smith. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, pretty works, much. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Nah. Uh, actually, why don't we go? We'll go if Geelong win. I reckon Mitch Duncan for Norm Smith. But yeah, Richmond. We we'll go Dusty. There you go. There you go. But I reckon that might do us for this week, boys. Um, just a, a nice little uh, change of pace there for, for a podcast talking about the upcoming grand finals. Uh, we'd like to yeah, just, uh, again, thank everybody for, for tuning into these podcasts. We really appreciate and, and all, and all the feedback we get. Um, we've also got uh, a bit of a, another revelation at the end of this, uh, when this podcast that Sean has put his own solo <laughs> YouTube video on looking at, um, looking at uh, some core plank stuff. So, uh, have a look at that, and there's a, a lot of comedic humour at the start of the video, which has mm. to be seen to be believed, um, I'm afraid. So definitely have a look at that one uh, after or before um, our podcast that we have available on YouTube, and, and yeah, you can subscribe, like, comment. If you have any questions or any queries that you'd like to get in contact with us, then, then please do so. Uh, our social media accounts are, Sean? Uh, Triax Performance. If you search for the Triax Performance on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you will find us there. I think are you missing one as well on that? Oh, and and the TikTok. Sorry, I can't forget yeah, Rob's, no, it's Rob's not, actually, little, that's little project there. That's that's also my other issue. It's not called the TikTok, it's just called TikTok. So uh, yeah, well, I meant can, like uh, the, uh, the, the platform that TikTok. The platform yeah. TikTok. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah, we're also on TikTok. So come on, yeah, give me give me some help. <laughs> and uh Damo, if you want to send us an email, how do you go about doing that? Yeah, so we've got admin at triaxperformance.com or if you want to check out the website as well, we've got a contact page where um, that'll come through to us as well. So that's triaxperformance.com. Very good. Oh, well, I think that might do us for this episode of the DKEDS podcast. So thanks, uh, Damo, and to you, Sean, as always. Uh, we'll see you next time where hopefully we'll have maybe a bit more of a serious podcast. <laughs>